The gospel for this Sunday is from the gospel of St. Mark, the first chapter beginning with the 29th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came up and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It really is a pleasure and a joy to be with you today, and I'm, I'm so glad that, that I can um, worship God and sing with you and pray with you and, and be in um, holy community with you. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Savior and our hope. Amen. You know, there are so many stories out there of pain, of heartache, of illness, of death, of worry. We could all name family members, loved ones, friends, friends of friends, acquaintances of acquaintances, all who are suffering. And it makes my heart ache. It fills me with almost despair. And I cannot help but wonder, why? Why so much pain? And when I read the first part of Isaiah 40 today, what we just heard, I almost feel, I almost feel when we read those verses 21 through 24 today, that God is rebuking me for being in despair. Do you remember the words we just heard? Let me just remind you what the prophet Isaiah said today. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when God blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. <gasps> right? These words seem to put me in my place. I feel like I'm being pushed down as though... God is sitting on some throne high above and far away, and we're like grasshoppers, just down here, way, way down here, trying to live our lives. Sometimes sick, sometimes worried, sometimes feeling the weight of everything, and no one cares about us at all. Ever feel like this? I felt like this before especially at 3 a.m. when I wake up and I start to pray and I just keep praying because the list just gets longer. Maybe this is why we have the miracle healing stories in scripture. Maybe this is why Mark recorded this story of Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. Maybe this is why we have 36 healing stories in the Gospels. Maybe this is why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John include these beautiful miracle stories in each of their Gospels to show that God cares. Maybe we have these stories because, well, God might be a mystery, might be beyond our understanding. 
These stories are told to bring hope, to give us wonder, to show us who God is as we enter into the story of Jesus. And yet, and yet there is that obvious question that comes from these miracle stories. In light of though not only what each of us are going through individually, but also what the entire planet is going through collectively right now. The question that inevitably gets asked is, well, what about me? What about my loved one? What about us? What about now, God? We can ask quite legitimately, I think, what about those of us who have not received the miracle we are begging? I have to say that I feel much like Debbie, Debbie Thomas, who wrote in Journey with Jesus. Sometimes I wish that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had included other stories in their gospels too. She continues writing, did Jesus ever, for example, visit a feverish woman, take her hand and only offer the comfort of his presence? No cure. Did he ever tell a chronically ill child I can't take away your pain, but I love you, and I'll try my best to help you bear it. Did he ever encounter an unclean spirit he didn't cast out? Did he ever sit in the dark with a profoundly depressed man? Just sit? Did he ever keep vigil at a deathbed and cry with the family as they said goodbye? No resurrection, no Lazarus miracle just tears? Sir Debbie Thomas's words, I have no doubt that there were many other stories not written down or even told that at the end of John. And it says in today's gospel that Jesus healed many. Did you catch that? Jesus healed many. It doesn't say Jesus healed all. But truthfully, I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer as to why sometimes God works through miracles and sometimes God works through scientists who develop vaccines and nurses who care for those sick. I don't have the answer why some people get the miracle they pray for and others do not. I don't know why some people have miracles happen to them and they never even prayed or even had faith that a miracle could come. I know there are miracles. I've witnessed them. And certainly Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law and many who came to him. But I've also known heartache and what seems like unanswered prayer in my own life and for my loved ones. As a pastor for many years, I've held hand, many hands of the sick. I've officiated and attended many funerals. I've sat with so many parishioners and friends and family members where the outcome was not what we wanted. And it's hard. But my beloveds, this is what I've also witnessed. Even as we might wonder about miracles. In all of the times I've been privileged to be with people in their time of crisis, I have felt the presence of God. While a miracle didn't always happen, although sometimes they did, the presence of God was always able to be felt because God was present and God comforted, God touched each, each person with God's presence and God's Holy Spirit was the breath that was breathed into the person even as they left this earth behind. And God's spirit surrounded each person as they grieved their loss. Now, we heard, I read to you, uh, reminded you what the first part of, of the scripture from Isaiah was today. And so while we already heard in Isaiah that God is up here and we are but grasshoppers, there is this second part to the first reading today. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And I'd like to uh, read those passage, that passage to you now. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth who does not faint or grow weary, whose understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. 
even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Perhaps the answer lies here, miracle or not. Because what we hear in this passage from Isaiah is that God calls us to live in community with one another, to be in holy community with God and with each other. And that even though exhaustion comes, strength is given through God and we continue on, knowing that we are surrounded, upheld, and given strength through the community of Christ, through the Spirit. And so together, we carry on. I want to um, share the screen for just a moment. So give me a moment so I can pull up what I want to share here. So this picture that you see is Salisbury Cathedral. And this is a cathedral outside of uh, Salisbury, the town in, in England. And it's beautiful. It's 800 years old. It's a beautiful cathedral. But what is even more incredible, I mean, look at the inside. Look at this nave of the cathedral. It is gorgeous. So we could go there and visit and think, wow, what a beautiful cathedral. But I want to show you what is even more incredible. This is what's happening in Salisbury Cathedral right now. They've turned it into a vaccination clinic. And so people are queued up to receive vaccinations in this 800-year-old cathedral. And I, I, I learned about this because I was listening to NPR. Some of you might have heard this story too. And the organist uh, of Salisbury Cathedral is playing music as people are lined up to receive their vaccines. So he's playing Bach and, and Mozart, and he's playing church hymns, and he's playing um, uh, 1950s musical selections, and um, and he's playing all of this music, and people are lined up, and they're um, they're receiving healing, and they're also receiving comfort from um, from this organist's music. Now, now I share this these these pictures because there's something about this, about receiving vaccination in what we as Christians experience as a holy place that speaks to the scriptures that we've been talking about today. You know, in the world, maybe not us, but in the world, there are some people who look at church as something separate from the world. That, that you go in there and suddenly you're, you're no longer in the world, right? And yet in this cathedral, we see exactly what church is. That, that church is not this holy place apart, but instead a holy place that is a part of this world, which is also a holy place, the world and the church, both holy, right? Bringing hope and renewed life, sometimes with miracles and sometimes in other ways, such as giving vaccinations. As I think of the work that's going on in this 800-year-old cathedral and the work that the body of Christ, you, all of you are doing throughout the world, in the community of Renton, I hear these verses from Isaiah in a different way. Actually, let me not say I hear these words in a different way. I grasp these words from Isaiah with trembling hope. And I embrace the promise in the healing miracle story of Peter's mother-in-law. I listen with tears of joy that a cathedral has been transformed into a vaccination clinic so that healing may come to this world. And I am grateful, so grateful for the many, many ways that we are church in this world today, even when we're unable to gather in ways that we long to gather. And, and as I hear about the practices that you are doing at St. Matthew's, the practice of, of the hands that care, the, the restoration that you're talking about today, that, that you're leaning into is exactly how God works. As we heard about the free grocery store that, that you're doing every Monday, what a place for healing. I'm so thankful for you and for the work that you are doing and that we are doing together as we walk together in the synod and in this church. 
So through the questions we have, through the times we are in, through amazing miracles, and yes, even through tears, may we trust God's promises. For this is what I know. Regardless of how loud or how silent God seems, God is here for you, for your beloveds, and for this world. God is holding, caring, leading, guiding, dancing, loving each one of us today. Healing us sometimes spectacularly, miraculously, instantly. And sometimes God is working, bringing life and wholeness and healing in other ways. And always, always, no matter if it's instantaneously or longer or other ways, always healing comes through holy community with God and with one another. Today, tomorrow, forever, God is. And we know through Jesus that God is here, even in the darkest times. For this is the promise that we hear in Isaiah. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth who does not faint or grow weary. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is our promise. This is our hope. Amen.